Morning, folks. Welcome to worship this morning. I'm, I'm sorry to cut that off, really. It's such a lively song, isn't it? <laughs> I think that's Philip and Chris, and it's just a, a really lovely version of uh, Let It Shine. Uh, I hope you like this picture of the uh, the cows. So last, last week, um, when I uh, when I put the service uh, thing up, I, I used a photo that I'd taken just on the back lane here in Settle, uh, and that picture was of some sheep in a field. Uh, and one of our <laughs> one of our congregations sent me a, a, this photo and said we, we don't really do sheep, uh, but we do cows. And they just turned the cows out into the field um, and asked if we could have them instead. <laughs> so I'm not being sheepist or cowist. I'm just <laughs> trying to keep all of our farmers happy. All right. <laughs> So this is uh, this is from a farm up near Ivy, uh, and it's just lovely. So uh, it doesn't matter, does it? Sheep, cow. Well, it does matter to some. It doesn't matter to me. Sheep, cows, whatever. Let's uh, just celebrate uh, all that we've got around us. It's a beautiful day again uh, here in Settle, uh, and I can see it already is in in gig and, and around. Um, so morning, morning from Sunny Ingleton as well from Corey. Uh, morning to you. Morning from Bentham from uh, Martin Hodgson. Uh, and the family morning to you as well. Hope it's sunny where you are. Morning, uh, Margaret Aston in Barrowford. Morning to you, Margaret. Uh, lovely to have you with us again. Um, a sunny good morning to everyone from us both, from Eileen and John Edwards. Lovely to have you with us. Beautiful morning again. Aren't we blessed? Well, aren't we blessed, Paula? Uh, how lovely is it? Um, morning, everyone from Emma Skeldon. Morning, all from Sunny Gig, from Jill uh, O'Donnell. Um, another beautiful day in the Dales uh, from... Uh, well, from someone well known to me, Pam. <laughs> morning, Pam. <laughs> uh, Lane Austin, morning, everybody. Uh, and Emmy Hodgson, hello from all of us um, on the Ingleton page. So, morning to everybody uh, that's joining us for this service. It's lovely to have you with us. Um, 
Margaret Calvert, Headley says, morning, morning, Headley. It's lovely to have you with us. Judith Allenson, good morning from Langcliffe. Uh, in Star, what a lively start. It was a lively start, Ian. It was lovely. <laughs> um, Davina Cochram, uh, hi to you, uh, watching from Helifield. Another beautiful day in the day. Also, that's Pam again, moonlighting on both pages. Uh, Kath Wooler, morning all from Nora. Morning, uh, Nora. Lovely to have you with us again on a, a beautiful day, isn't it? Morning, everyone from Liz uh, and Glyn. Uh, I hope you really enjoy our service this morning. Let's... Uh, Let's put these cows to the background for now. I hope there won't be a laughing stock. <laughs> I know it's a terrible joke. Pam always has a go at me about my jokes. <laughs> so look, morning to everybody. We've got a, a lovely service for you this morning. I hope uh, you're looking forward to it. Um, today we're talking about creation care. Um, earlier this week it was um, a, an annual event in the calendar that we do try to mark. Uh, if we can do it was um, Earth Day uh, and it's just a day to remember uh, and to put the creation at the forefront of our minds um, to think about the, the diversity that we enjoy the incredible landscapes all around us and and the purpose of that is to marvel at the handiwork of God uh, to realize the power of God uh, in everything that he makes and his care in maintaining the creation I've seen so many posts these last few months saying, you know, aren't we lucky to live in such a beautiful place? And we are, but you know, you can find beauty in all places, whether it's urban spaces, you know, just look at the trees and the uh, the birds that survive there, peregrine falcons nesting on the, the high rise buildings of London. It's incredible, the adaptability um, of our creation uh, and, and it's stunning beauty, really, it's stunning beauty. Um, we're going to begin our service with uh, our first song uh, and it's a song that really talks about that amazing, uh, amazing life and beauty of the universe and the indescribable majesty of God. Before we sing, let's just pray together. God, thank you for bringing us together in this time and we offer you this service of praise. We lift our hearts to you. And we pray that you be with us here as we celebrate all things that you have made. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Now the other thing that you're going to need in the service is you're going to need a piece of paper. So I've got a bit of green paper and it'd be helpful if you can have a piece of green. But it doesn't matter if it's not green because uh, we can always colour it green. Um, what we're going to do in our service a little bit later on is we're going to make some green hearts. Uh, to show our green heart for the world. Uh, so if you want to get yourself some paper um, and perhaps a pen or perhaps some scissors uh, or perhaps an adult to help you, that, that might be struggle for some of you. <laughs> uh, certainly a responsible adult anyway. Um, but while well, we're going to sing our first song, Indescribable, and just if you'd like to, get yourself um, some pens and paper and scissors uh, and we're going to make some green hearts later on. of heights to the depths of the sea Creations revealing your majesty From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring Every creature unique in the song that it sings All exclaim Indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky And you know them by name You are amazing God All-powerful, untamable All struck we fall to our knees As we humbly proclaim Told every lightning bolt where it should go Or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow Who imagined the sun and 
give souls to its light Yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night None can fathom indescribable I love that song. It's just the, the the whole idea and the premise of the song that God's creation is indescribably marvellous, magnificent, uh, huge, enormous, amazing. <laughs> what other words can we think of? <laughs> so I've got a little quiz for you. I wonder if it answers in the comments uh, section, please. So if this apple represents the earth, if this apple is the earth, how much of the earth is water? How much of the earth is ocean? Does anybody know the answer to that? How much of the earth do we think is ocean? So answers in comments please. Um, I'm going to chop this apple up as we go through the service and we'll divide it down into its little bits uh, of what the earth is used for and how it's used. So I wonder if you know how much of this apple how much of the earth is covered in water because water of course is difficult isn't it although we can move ships and things around it uh, humans can't live on water well i suppose some people live on boats but not many people live on water do they so uh, everything of this apple that's water everything of the earth that's water we won't be able to live on so how much of that do we think is water so emmy hudson 75 percent uh Philip Taylor, two thirds. Ian Sturrock, two thirds. Two thirds is popular. <laughs> uh, any any other guesses? Any other advances on two thirds? Rachel Whitfield, Steve reckons seventy percent. You see, you should always trust a university lecturer. <laughs> Corey says 80% Steve. Uh, Corey, listen to Steve. <laughs> so I'm going to take this apple. I'm going to take a knife. And I'm going to cut the apple. First of all in half. And then nearly in half again. So look. All of that much of the apple is the oceans and the rivers and we can't live on any of that can we so we've only got this little bit left emmy hodgson says that was noah that had a guess and noah brilliant about 75 percent when you take all the rivers and everything into account as well so look that is all that's left of the earth that we can live on we're gonna we're gonna see a little talk now i, I love this i came i've seen these a few times but i really really like them so i i got this one to be able to show in our service today it's a, it's by a it's american but it's by a puppeteer called jj graves um, and this one's called take care of the earth this is um well you may have heard of these things called ted talks where um some eminent professor does a talk on something uh, well this is this is douglas talks <laughs> i love this hey guys Look at this flower that I made. Today we're going to be talking about taking care of the world God gave us. Hey 
Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas. And yeah, so I made this flower. Well, I didn't really make it, but I helped it grow and, and lots of other flowers too because my mom gave me this this patch in the garden, this area in the garden that I got to call my own. And I, I decided to grow some flowers in it. And it's actually, it was really hard work to grow flowers. I didn't realize how much work went into it, but you gotta water them if it's not raining and you gotta take care of the weeds. You gotta pull up the weeds so they don't choke up your little flowers. And you also gotta look out for bugs too. Like if there's any bugs there, you gotta you gotta spray spray for the bugs so they don't eat your flowers and then also sometimes if it gets too cold you got to go out at night and cover them up with a blanket or something so they don't freeze and uh, so it and it, it takes a long time to to grow flowers too a long time like it takes about a month uh, but you know after they're all grown then you've got these nice little flowers and uh, so I got these flowers and I and I went and I gave them to a whole bunch of people. I gave one to my mom and I gave one to my dad and I gave one to the neighbor lady and I gave one to my Sunday school teacher. And I even gave one to my dog Roscoe, which it turns out was kind of a mistake. Because you see, everybody, when I gave them a flower, what they did was they were like, oh, Douglas, thank you for the flower. That's so nice. So, you know, they'd say something like that. And especially my mom, she she took the flower and she put it in a vase and she she put it up on the kitchen table and she, she gave it some plant food and some water and she put it in a nice spot. And that made me really happy when they took this thing that I made for them because it took me a long time and, and everybody was really ha glad to have it. But when I gave it to my dog, Roscoe, I... Uh, I called him in. I said, hey, Roscoe, boy, I got something for you. And he comes in. He's like, <laughs> and he walks up to me. And I say, here you go, Roscoe. I made you this flower. And he, he bites it in his mouth, which that's okay because, you know, he doesn't have thumbs, so he's got to pick things up with his mouth. So I didn't mind that he picked it up with his mouth. But he took it in his mouth, and then he went, <laughs> and petals were flying everywhere. There was flower stuff all over the place. And then he just had a, a just the, the green part. And even that, he put it on the ground, and he stepped on it with one foot, and he pulled on it with the other foot and he ripped it in half and then he ate half of it and he didn't even like it so he kind of he threw it up on the floor and then he just walked away and I'm standing there and I'm just like why would you do that oh I was so mad at Wasker I was so sad I wasn't just mad I was sad because I made this nice thing for him I made this nice flower but well okay so it wasn't this flower because this flower still looks good but it was a different flower and and I felt so bad that he took this thing I made for him and he just he just destroyed it and I, that made me not feel very happy about this nice thing I'd given him you know God made a gift for us just kind of like I made this flower for my friends and my family. God made a gift for us, and that is the earth. The whole planet earth, the whole world God made for us. Yeah, he made it just for people. He made it just for us. He, he gave us air to breathe and water to drink and plants and animals and all kinds of awesome things to look at, like mountains and forests and oceans and, and all kinds of cool stuff. He gave us this awesome world to live in and to take care of, but sometimes we don't do a very good job. Sometimes we waste what he gave us. Sometimes we make it all nasty. And sometimes we just act like we don't even care about what he gave us. You know, we just stay inside all day and we never go outside and we don't see the cool stuff God made us. And when we do all that stuff, it's like we're a wasco. And God is like, here you go, everyone. I made you this beautiful world. And we take it and we say, oh, thank you, God. And we take the world in our mouth and we go, rah, 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 rah. and then we throw it up on the ground. But that's not what we should be like. We should not be like Wasco. We should be like my mom and take very good care of the thing that God made us. And so how, how can we take care of the world that God gave us? Well, one of the ways that we can take care of the world is by recycling. You know, sometimes some of the stuff that we throw away, it doesn't have to go in the garbage. It doesn't have to go stay in the dump because there's some stuff like plastics and paper and things where they can take it to a place and they can melt it down or chop it down and, and make it into something new. And that way it doesn't just go sit at a dump. Another thing you can do is just not waste stuff. You know, God gave us this earth. He gave us all these things, all these resources that we can use, but there's only so much of it. So like when we turn on the lights, that's using up resources that God gave us. So one of the things you can do is not waste electricity and don't waste water because it takes energy to make the water clean to drink and clean to, you know, take a bath in and wash the dishes and things like that and brush your teeth. So when you are using water, don't waste it. When you're using light, don't waste it. Well, any kind of electricity, don't just leave things on and running. Another thing that you can do is don't litter. Litter is when you take some garbage that you've got and instead of throwing it in the trash can like you're supposed to you just throw it on the ground because you don't want to deal with it you don't want to go find a trash can it might not seem like a big deal you know just throw one bubblegum wrapper on the ground but if enough people do that then we're swimming in bubblegum wrappers and that's no good and you can do your part to make things better by not 
littering. So if you're done with your candy wrapper, don't just throw it out the window, but throw it in the garbage so that it'll go where it needs to go. Another thing you can do is, well, I mean, anything else, anything you can think of to help make the world a more beautiful place. You know, you could plant a garden or you could pick up trash, even if it's not your trash. You can go, like, ask a park ranger if there's something you can do at your local park. There's all kinds of things that you can do to help make the world a better place and show God that we are grateful and thankful for the awesome things that God gave us. You might not be able to totally change the world, but you can take care of the little bit of the world that God gave you. So that's my challenge is that we would, we'd be grateful to God and we'd show him that we're thankful for what he gave us and take care of the awesome world he made just for us. Well, I'm going to go put this flower in a vase, but I hope that you will remember that God loves you so much that he gave you the whole earth and we should take care of it. Bye, guys. <laughs> Such a lot of wisdom <laughs> from Douglas and his talk. We are not be able to change the world, he said, but we can take care of our little corner of it. <laughs> I wonder how you might change the world. I wonder how we might do little things. What ideas have you got for the little ways that we can change our corner of the world? This is the rest of the world that we've got left with now. We've taken out the oceans, uh, so we've got this bit left now. This is all the land in the world. But some of that land isn't livable, is it? Some of that land is desert. How much of the land do you think is desert? What percentage of the land do you think is desert? How much is not livable at all? Because it's, well, barren. I'm not going to say sandy because some deserts aren't sandy, are they? Some are rocks, uh, some are ice, um, ice caps or glaciers or things like that. Some of it is just barren, nothing grows on it. So how much of this do you think is represented by desert? In the comments, please. And I'm going to play another song now. And I love this song. Who put the colours in the rainbow? Fab song. So, 
A few interesting answers to that one, a few varied ones. Uh, so I asked you how much of uh, the, the land area that we've got left here uh, is, uh, is covered by desert. So um, that can be glaciers, it can be uh, sandy deserts, it can just be barren places where uh, bare rock even, where, where nothing can grow. So um, Corey says 10%, uh, Emma Skeldon James says 20%. Uh, Nathan says 25% and Lorraine Oliver says 30%. So we've been <laughs> we've been slowly going up a little bit on Ingleton's page. Uh, Jill O'Donnell says uh, 30%. So Ian Storrock then uh, ups it again and says 40% on the settle page. Um, so how much of this is, uh, is uh, desert? Well, so about 20% is barren land and another... 20 percent another 10 percent is glaciers so it's about a third of everything that's i'm not going to cut my hands off so about a third of all that was left is just like desert or glacier or something like that so um so we already got rid of uh, all of that because that was the ocean uh, and we've now got rid of uh, a third of all the land that we had because that's um, uh, either glacier or desert uh, and not livable. So all that we're left with now is this little corner. And I'm going to ask you in a minute or two, um, what percentage of this is forests or big, you know, uh, scrubland, something like that. So what, what corner of this is like the Amazon rainforest or something like that. So how much of this is then covered by by forest land so we're, we're going to break that down in a minute so answers uh, in the in the chat if you would like to um, the next thing we're going to see is a little video that um, Judith made for us so this is really lovely so um, I've shortened it a little because I'm going to play it over two weeks because Judith talks about something that's happening next weekend and then the weekend after so next weekend um, you'll see in her video there's um, a nature walk and litter picks from um, Settled Swimming Pool. The following Sunday is a, a, Sunday, a special Sunday in the calendar called Rogation Sunday and Judith talks about that but I, I've cut the video so um, the second half of it we'll, we'll have a look at next week. Um, but Judith went for a walk above uh, her home in Landcliff um, and this is her video showing you some of that. On Tuesday, I went for a walk high above Landcliff to this secret hidden valley. Straight ahead of us is Landcliff and behind us is the boundary wall between the parish of Landcliff and the parish of Settle. So Settle Methodist Church is about a mile behind us. And I went up here because I was looking for this plant called hare's tail cotton grass. It's grey now but by the end of May there'll be costly white heads like little hare's tail and it only grows in boggy wet places and I'd remember that I'd seen some appear about 20 years ago and I came up to see if it was still here because I'm writing a little map for Lancliffe to show what flowers grow in the parish of Lancliffe and where they grow in May. So yes it's still here, hare's tail cotton grass. The reason why this little valley is a little bit wet and peaty is because boulder clay has been left by the glacier. So the cliffs on either side are limestone and the water drains away quickly in the limestone but the boulder clay here holds the water. We've heard on the radio about climate change and there's lots of also about carbon sequestration. There's some sorts of soils will keep the carbon in it for a long time and that happens with boggy wet soils. So this little bit here will be saving carbon providing it's not drained. Well, there's some nice plants on the cliffs, some fantastic lichens on this lump of rock lichen or lichen. Higher up this slope, miles away from any woodland, was this beautiful flower, wood anemone. Here 
Here's the sycamore plantation above Lancliffe. In the distance there's Ingleborough. It was a hazy day. And here are just a few flowers that we can find around Settle now. We've got Colt's foot on the left. That's actually made up of lots of tiny little flowers. Each of them has five petals. Marsh Marigold or King Cup. That needs a wet place. Colt's foot and milkmaids, or cuckoo flower, or ladies' smock. That's got four different English names. The bottom one is Town Hall Clock. That's a special flower. Well, we do live in a lovely area, and at the moment we have a nice climate, but we have to be concerned that the way we're treating the earth, the way humankind is treating the earth, is causing climate change. And we're also losing many of the plants and animals. We have a climate and ecological emergency. Before I do my other things, I'd just like to say there's two most important things we can do is we can tell our MP that we are concerned about the environment. And it's up to the government to set decent rules for us to treat the environment well. And then for those of us who've got any savings and pensions, we must make sure that they're invested in projects that are not destroying the environment. So those are two really big important things we can do. Okay, there's three things I'd like to raise, two in detail, one only tiny, and tell you about. So the first thing is on... The first of each month, a group of us from Churches Together in Settlement District go out for a walk, a nature walk for the climate. So we'll be doing that on the 1st of May. The second thing I'd like to talk about is eco rogation Sunday. And the third thing I just invite you to think about, all of us, is what we can do at St John's and the other churches in the Settle Bentham Circuit to look after the environment. So, 1st of May, if you'd like to come, we're meeting at 10 o'clock, meeting at Settle Swimming Pool Car Park. And if you've got some thick gloves, protective gloves, bring your thick protective gloves for picking up litter. But I also hope to look at flowers as we go along. So please tell Stephen Dawson or Sally Waterson or myself if you'd like to come. Back in November, it was a rainy day on the 1st of November, but we met two young lads who normally come to Messy Church who were looking at Settle Hydro. Then in December, just two of us went on a walk up, because of rules, up onto Castleburg, and from Castleburg you can see all the way across, in fact, to Giggleswick, and I'm showing us a book called Wildlife in a Churchyard, made by, made by Doris Cairns, about the wildlife in Giggleswick Churchyard. In February and again in April, we went to Stainforth Foss. In the February, was still a big bag had been left by some people way back last summer. Sorry, I cut that off a bit sharpish. I realise that at the end. Look, there's some great ideas of different things you can do there. I love Judith's first idea, which is to, to go out into your local area and just make a list of the plants and things that you find there. You know, what are the flowers that you can find just in your village or, or town or area? Um, you know, just limit it so that it's small enough. What about in your garden? What are the plants that you can find in your garden? What about the birds that you can see that come to visit your garden? Um, just try and make a list of those different things and, and to see the variety of things. But we can make a practical difference too. Uh, and Judith shows that with some of the litter picking that she does. If anybody would like to join that, then please do have a word with Judith or settle a uh, swimming pool car park on the 1st of May, as she said. So I asked you how much of this left, what I've got left here of the apple is um, forest um, and troubling. So how much is forest? Well, it turns out it's about a third of what I had left. So, uh, and I have seen a comment from Jill saying, has anybody done a risk health and safety assessment of me with a knife? <laughs> Trust me, my wife has. <laughs> 
So we're going to cut off another third of that, which is forest and scrubland. And this is what we're left with, just this piece here. So how much of this piece now do we think is taken up with agriculture? So with fields or with um, uh, for crops or for, um, for sheep or for cattle, how much of this do we think now is taken up with agriculture, uh, with growing the food that we eat? So answers in the chat. One of the things that we, uh, are, one of the things we're going to see now, uh, while you think about those answers, it's time to get on your feet uh, and to do a, a, a lovely, silly song. This is the butterfly song, uh, and Philip has done this for us. It's action time. So this song is so full of actions. I can't teach you them all. So what we're going to do is learn the actions just for the chorus so that we're all doing the same thing. The song is called If I Were a Butterfly, so you can imagine this is all about creatures. Um, and the chorus goes like this. For you gave me a heart and you gave me a smile. You gave me Jesus and you made me your child. And I just thank you, Father, for making me. So, the actions, I'm gonna to have to stand up to show you these. You gave me a heart, big heart shape. Gave me a smile, big smile. And you gave me Jesus. Now remember a long time ago, I told you about the word Jesus, Christ. In Greek, it starts with a K for Christ, and that's shaped like an X. And we're gonna do a great big X. Feet wide apart, arms wide apart, and then uh, and you made me your child, so rock your child. And then I just thank you, Father, for making me. Shall we just put that together? For you gave me a heart, and you gave me a smile. You gave me Jesus, and you made me your child. And I just thank you, Lord, for making me. Let's do that singing at the same time. For you gave me a heart and you gave me a smile. You gave me Jesus and you made me your child. And I just thank you, Father, for making me. That's easy. So, three verses and three choruses. Uh, we know what to do in the choruses. In the verses, there are so many different animals. All I want you to do is to make up um, some action to describe that creature. Uh, the first one is a butterfly, so that's easy. Butterfly wings. Um, watch out, our wiggly wiggly worm comes back somewhere. Um, just do whatever you feel. Uh, you can make a noise of the animal or make an action. All right, so here we go. We're going to go right through it. Are you ready? If I were a butterfly, I'd thank you, Lord, for giving me wings. And if I were a robin in a tree, I'd thank you, Lord, that I could sing. And if I were a fish in the sea, I'd wiggle my tail and I'd giggle with glee. And I just thank you, Father, for making me. Here comes the chorus. For you gave me a heart and you gave me a smile. You gave me Jesus and you made me a child. And I just thank you, Father, for making me. Here's the second verse. If I were an elephant, I'd thank you, Lord, by raising my trunk. And if I were a kangaroo, you know I'd hop right up to you. And if I were an octopus, I'd thank you, Lord, for my fine looks. But I just thank you, Father, for making me chorus. For you gave me a heart and you gave me a smile. You gave me Jesus and you made me a child. And I just Father, for making me. Third verse. 
If I were a wiggly worm, I thank you, Lord, that I could squirm. And if I were a billy goat, I thank you, Lord, for my strong throat. And if I were a fussy wuzzy bear, I thank you, Lord, for my fussy wuzzy hair. But I just thank you, Father, for making me now a last chance. Here we go, chorus. What a fab, fab song that is, isn't it? Thank you so much to Philip for recording it for us. Um, I hope you got around and jumped around and danced a bit and, and made a noise like a butterfly or <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> so look, I asked you beforehand, how much of this uh, apple that was left uh, is um, agriculture, is uh, uh, arable farming or uh, sheep farming or, or whatever else? Um, the answer to that is that almost all of what I've got left now, so it was 50% of, of that total, but remember we've already taken off that little bit. So actually, uh, of, of this lot that I've got left, if I take that little bit away, all of that, all of that there, is what's used to grow our food, our agriculture and so on. And what's left is this, which is a tiny, tiny little sliver. If I cut that in half, that much of the whole apple, 1% of the apple, is where human beings live. So all of our towns, all of our cities exist in that little 1% of this huge apple that we started with. We live in that small portion, but the way that we live has a huge impact on the whole. We're going to explore that in a minute, but before that, we're going to return to a theme of uh, all age services that we've been following for uh, the last few services that I introduced uh, when we began Lent, and I, I hope you enjoy. Uh, this is, um, well, this is my best efforts at creation cookies. So welcome to another Baking Through the Bible. Uh, we're following this uh, lovely book that we've been using a couple of times in our All Age Worship. Uh, and today we're thinking about um, the earth and creation uh, and everything that God made. Uh, and that's the very first recipe in this book. It's called God Makes Creation. Uh, and what we're going to make uh, as part of that is creation cookies. I mean, could it be anything other than wonderful cookies? <laughs> So we've got some brilliant ingredients here. We've got um, some plain flour, we've got some eggs, some vanilla essence, but you can flavour your biscuits with anything that you like. We've got some butter and some caster sugar. And that really is about it. There's nothing more to it than that, apart from, and this is where we get into how creative can we be? You see, when God made the earth, God made everything in it. And it's amazing how many different types of animals and plants and things there are in the world, isn't it? We talked in one of our services a, a while ago about how many just how many different types of beetles there are. Or if you can remember the answer to that one. Well, I've got a lot of different cutters here, so we're going to make some cookies and we're going to bake them into lots and lots of different shapes. So, shall we get started? So, we're going to start by taking our sugar and our softened butter and beating them together in a bowl. It's all mixed and it's time to get your hands in. So we've got our cookie dough now out to 
the fridge. And I've divided it into two parcels, two halves, just so it's easier to deal with. Uh, and I've floured the surfaces. So what we're going to do now is roll this out and then we're going to cut it into all sorts of different shapes and sizes. And so now what we're going to do is the fun bit. Now we're going to cut it into all sorts of different shapes. So do you remember the Bible story of creation? How God made the earth, how he separated the light from the dark, how he put the sun and the moon in the sky, and then he started creating. Imagine what fun all that must have been. I imagine he created things like these plants, or this flower, can you imagine the look on his face when he did that? Can you imagine the joy and the delight he might have taken in making flowers? Once he'd made the flowers and the things on the earth, he started making things in the sea, like these fish. Well, what about a whale? An amazing thing a whale is, isn't it? Imagine God creating a whale. Can you imagine the power that God must have to be able to do things like, things like that? Once he created the fish in the sea, he created the birds in the air, all the things that fly, like this beautiful dove. What about the insects? What do you think of insects? Do you think they're nice or do you think they're horrible? And what about these beautiful butterflies? Don't you think they're lovely? Once he created them, oh, let's have another tree. We need to fill our land up a little bit, don't we? Just to make it really lovely. Somewhere nice for the birds to perch, otherwise they'll be flying around all the time with nowhere to land. Then we will just have a Maybe we'll have a couple of trees in our world. The best thing about this is that we're being able to create just like God created things. So here we are with all of the creations that I've done. Can you imagine how imaginative God must have been? to make all these different things from bunnies to lions to trees to birds to whales to butterflies and sharks trees and flowers all sorts of different things made by God and made beautiful so we're just going to get them out now I'll tell you the smell in here is beautiful think of all these different animals then. We'll have a go at decorating them soon. So here's all the different creatures that we've made. These are all gorgeous biscuits and we've had an awful lot of fun making them. Can you see all the different things there are? There are trees and there are fish and there's giraffes and there's lions. There's a little cat sat here and a bunny. There's people, there's flowers, there's whales, there's butterflies, there's horses and lambs. And if we come down to this one here, there's all sorts of different trees and giraffes again, big giraffes and little giraffes and small elephants and big bunnies and elephants again and more people. What happened when God had made all these things is he must have had so much fun <laughs> colouring them all in. <laughs> So I just want to say, I want you to have lots and lots of fun, make these biscuits, but talk about the, how amazing it must be to have the imagination that God had. All we've done here is copy his design, but God made these things in the first place. And do you know the best thing about that God who made all of these things? He made you and me, and he cares about us. He cares about us so much, he came to show how much he loved us. 
and he came to walk among all of his creation. What he asks us to do now is to look after him, to care for him. I'm sure we can manage that, can't we? Yeah, how amazing is God's creation compared to Tim's creation? <laughs> I've got to be honest. <laughs> I loved uh, your comment, Nathan. Thank you so much. Talking about proportion, that's the world's biggest duck. It was the world's biggest duck. It was far bigger than an elephant, wasn't it? <laughs> what I love about this Bake Through the Bible uh, book is um, that you get to talk about the stories as you do it. Um, and I had a lot of fun just looking for the different animals and shapes uh, and things that I wanted to create and then deciding how to colour them in. And, you know, and I look at creation, I look at the, the flowers that Judith showed or the, the butterflies and the birds that I love to watch and just think how amazing that God created and takes care of, of every one of those things. Uh, it really is beautiful. We're going to have a prayer now. This is a, a prayer for Earth Day. Um, written by um, the Methodist Church. God of love and grace, through your presence you make all things holy. We celebrate the sacredness of your creation, the sacredness of all living things, the earth, the seas, the skies. We acknowledge that the earth is yours, given as a common treasury for all. Grant us such openness to your presence that we may treat this your planet with reverence, that we may respect its limits and boundaries, that we may share its goodness fairly and sustainably. God, our creator, saviour and peace giver, teach us how to live in holy communion with you and with your world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Jill O'Donnelly writes, sadly the Megasaurus duck is now extinct. It got attacked by herds of giant butterflies. <laughs> yeah, it probably did. <laughs> you saw those. Multicoloured giant butterflies though, let's be honest. <laughs> so I showed you before, this, uh, from a whole apple of this size, this is the amount of land, of surface area, 1% that human beings live on. The, the trouble is that this 1% can affect the rest of it. So I've got another apple here and, and I have got a sharp knife and, and Jill, I am conscious that maybe I should be careful when I'm using these knives. I'm just gonna cut it on my chopping board here. But what looks like a beautiful apple, when I cut it in half, What happens if part of it is infected with something that's not nice? So I put in here some food colouring just so you can see. I made a little hole in it and that colour has spread all the way through. And that's what happens when we don't treat the earth well. In Judith's um, uh, piece she talked about helping and changing our little corner of the earth but actually doing something for our corner affects the whole of the earth. It affects the whole health of the earth. I don't know if you fancy eating this apple now. It's only a green apple, really. It's just got some food colouring in it. But that's what we're doing to the world when we don't treat it well and with respect. And although it might look that the whole earth on the outside is doing okay, it's when you get into it that you realise there are problems. Those problems aren't just enormous butterflies. <laughs> So what can we do about it? Well, I said right at the beginning of this service, if you get yourself some paper, um, ideally green paper, but possibly um, other coloured paper um, that we can, uh, so we're going to make hearts. Um, I've got some green paper here and I'm going to make a heart with this green paper. There's lots of ways you can do it. You could draw a heart on it and cut it out. Um, I'm just going to take this piece of paper uh, and a pair of scissors what I'm going to do is just cut around the edge here. I'm going to cut all the way down. Right down to the bottom. So that when I open this out, I've got a big green 
heart. A big green heart is a symbol that I care for the environment. And what I'm going to suggest is perhaps that we make green hearts and we put them into our windows or onto our fridges if they're smaller ones than this so that we remember that we care for the environment and we should switch lights off when we're not in the room. We should do the little things like not littering or picking up litter that make a difference to our environment. Pam made us a little video of a different way of making a green heart. This is a lovely short thing but do try and copy this if you've got a piece of paper. Thank you, Pam. So uh, just Jill, for your health and safety purposes, if you don't want to use knives and scissors, which obviously I've been using, <laughs> then you can fold a lovely green heart. Um, but my idea would be, can we put green hearts in our windows? Can we put green hearts on our fridges or next to our light switches in our bedrooms? Just to remember that we need to turn things off uh, or perhaps buy our litter bins to remember that we need to put things into our bins. We've got one last song before we finish. It's a, a, a song IMC recorded a little while ago uh, with lots of different people taking part. He's got the whole world in his hands. Yes, it's 
girl tingle turn and set to Amy's hand. I love that version. I mean, it, it takes us back, doesn't it, to the very beginning of lockdown and to the difficulties that we all felt uh, and how lovely it was to see everybody. Thank you for being a part of this service. Thank you for sticking with us. It's um, I want to remember Earth Day and, and our responsibility to, to just tread lightly uh, on this world, to treat it with care and respect, not like Douglas's dog Roscoe, to get it in our jaws and rip it apart with petals flying everywhere <laughs> thanks to everyone that was a part of this service um, do join us next week uh, for church together um, and may God's blessing uh, go with you Amen <laughs>